I got a little bit of a hack if you're using Craigslist to um, look for housing and I discovered this out of frustration when I first moved to this home here in Mercer Island. This one that I'm living in right now. And what I discovered was that, let's say I Google uh, rooms for share in Mercer Island and there might be 20 or 30 listings that I might be interested in. And I go into it and I hit reply. Okay, show the email. When I email them, I'm a professor, I do private tutoring and whatever, right? Uh, my, I'm 34 years old, uh, uh, whatever the situation is. Introduce myself, give references, and then I send 20 or 30 emails, and I might get five or six back. That's pretty normal. Now, the problem is that when you get an email back, a lot of times... Um, the site will have expired. Um, a few years ago, Craigslist started charging a $5 fee per month to list them. And sometimes the listing will completely expire. And now you have no idea what the listing is about, right? There might be something that you might be interested in. Let's look at this ad, for example. Well, obviously the price is in the ad. Uh, whether or not they want you to, uh, well, this mandate that we have going on is in the ad, right? I mean, sometimes you can talk them, talk around these people. Sometimes you can't. You gotta read between the lines. I'll let you decide that. Maybe you don't care about taking that drug, uh, who you're living with, and all that. Uh, all of a sudden, all this information completely disappears when somebody responds to you and their ad has expired, right? And so you gotta ask them. And I find that a lot of times some because it forces you to open your mouth and ask, you kind of weaken your position, right? So for example, I would prefer if the place doesn't have pets. I don't know, does this one specify pets? It doesn't, right? And so now, you know, if it doesn't, then I have to ask for it. But if it did and I asked again, I really didn't have to weaken my negotiation that way, right? So I got a little bit of a hack. Before I respond, I copy this down and I put it into, the, into a spreadsheet and I put a number with it. And then when I go to email this person, I uh, sign my name with the number at the end. And um, now they respond to me. And I don't have to ask things that will weaken my, uh, my uh, position. Now, um, there is one thing that um, I noticed that is a little bit frustrating. And I think um, there's a reason for that. So... As a guy here in the Seattle area, I find that some of the best, I mean, ter in terms of quality, rooms for shears are for, are for females only. But I'm not shy about responding to them anyway. I'll discuss my situation, give references, and I'll, I'll admit that if it doesn't work for them, I understand. And sometimes I still get a few hits. Um, and you might be wondering if I think we should ban such blatant discrimination. I don't think we should. I think the problem is that we disallow a lot of other forms of discrimination, right? So a lot of people use gender as almost a proxy for other things they would love to discriminate against, right? Especially untidiness and all that, right? And uncredit worthiness and all that. Because let's face it, there are other ways that we could look for that stuff, but that might be risky, right? We've specifically allowed people to discriminate against gender in room share situations, right? So I think the way to get around the gender discrimination in room share is to allow all sorts of other discrimination, right? Race, age, credit, and all that, right? And But I'm a libertarian, so uh, that's my view on it. Anyways, a little bit of a Craigslist hack if you're uh, looking for a room share situation.